Hello, and welcome to our service of the Church Without Walls, streamed on behalf of all Saints Lockbrook and St. Stephen's Borowash. Thank you for joining us wherever you are throughout the world. During this service, we are celebrating God's wonderful and bountiful harvest, and our reading and thought for the way will be based upon this theme. We are not accepting food donations this year due to COVID-19, so we are supporting the work of the Canaan Trust. And if you are interested, we will share more information about them and the very valuable work they do at the end of today's service. But let us begin with a prayer firstly. Let us pray. Creator God, breathing your own life into our being, you give us the gift of life. You placed us on this earth with its flowers and fruits, minerals and waters, living creatures of grace and beauty. And at harvest time, the earth reaches the peak of its fruitfulness. It depends on us to praise you by harvesting its goods in ways which ensure there will be harvest in the future. You give us the care of the earth. Today you ask us, where are you? What have you done? Amen. Today's reading is John 6, 1 to 13. Jesus feeds the 5,000. Sometime after this, Jesus crossed to the far shore of Sea of Galilee, and a great crowd of people followed him because they saw the signs he had performed by healing the sick. Then Jesus went up on a mountainside and sat down with his disciples. The Jewish Passover festival was near. When Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming towards him, he said to Philip, Where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? He asked this only to test him, for he already had in mind what he was going to do. Philip answered him, It would take more than a half year's wages to buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. Another one of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Here is a boy with five barley loaves and two small fish. And how far will they go among so many? Jesus said, Have the people sit down. There was plenty of grass in that place, and they sat down. Jesus then took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. He did the same with the fish. When they had all had enough to eat, he said to the disciples, Gather the pieces that are left over. Let nothing be wasted. So they gathered them and filled twelve baskets with pieces of five barley loaves left over by those who had eaten. Good morning, and I hope you enjoyed that short slideshow of photos and music. 
some of the pictures were taken um, when I went on a walk uh, in the Peak District just last weekend. And some of the other pictures um, were taken here in the parish precisely this time last year. And those were provided by Moira in our church family. And Moira also produced a slideshow. So a big thank you for your help with the tech as always, Moira. What all these pictures show, of course, is that we're now well on our way into autumn. It's hard to believe uh, we're here already. And although it's a bit colder and a bit more grey out there and um, we have quite an anxious few months ahead of us, the world is still turning, the seasons continue to change and autumn is still rather glorious. And in the church, it is, of course, traditionally a season of thanksgiving and harvest celebrations. It's a time when our church would normally be packed and we'd be singing our hearts out to familiar hymns like the one you just heard. It's a time when we say thank you to God for all that we have and also um, bring food and other essentials in parcels uh, for people who might be struggling in our communities. Well, we can't do all of that in quite the same way this year, but instead, as you heard from Bruce, we're supporting the Canaan Trust charity. So if you'd normally bring a food parcel to church at Harvest, it's good to know there's still a way to donate to a very worthy cause. Of course, we know there are um, increasing numbers of individuals and families in this country and across the world worrying about basic provisions. Because our world is fragile and imperfect, this has always been the case, sadly. But this year, there are additional pressures as the coronavirus pandemic affects businesses and jobs across the globe. So I always think of Harvest as quite a bittersweet time, really, of um, giving thanks for all the blessings that we do have, um, while still acknowledging that there's always going to be people in need and then trying to help in whatever way we can. So thank goodness that places like the Canaan Trust and food banks are there. Thank goodness there are generous people in our communities who are willing to give money, food, clothes, their time and all sorts of other things. But where is God in all of this during this time of giving and giving thanks? Well, the Bible passage for this week explains some key things about the way in which God provides and what our part is in that too. The feeding of the 5,000 is, of course, a very exceptional event because it's a miracle. And miracles, by definition, are things which defy logical explanation and which involve supernatural divine in intervention. They just don't happen very often, or at least not as visibly and publicly as this. But this miracle seems to have special significance because it's the only miracle that Jesus did which appears in all of the four books of the Gospels. It seems that for some reason, it's worth repeating. It's almost as if um, it has a particular spotlight on it or um, a spiritual highlighter pen, which indicates there's something to take particular note of. So let's take a look at it. In verse five, when great crowds of people were heading towards Jesus, he didn't say what, what I would probably say, which is, oh, oh, heck, oh dear, what a lot of people. Whatever they want, I, I just can't cope. Can't we just send them away? Instead, Jesus is thinking about how they'll all be feeling, of how they'll be ready for a rest and something to eat. And he asks his disciple, Philip, where are we going to buy bread for these people? And this shows in the plainest possible way that Jesus cares about basic needs. When Jesus teaches the disciples about how to pray, and that's described in the book of Matthew, verse eight, he says, 
Your father knows what you need before you ask him. So the basics for human flourishing are all known to God, of course. And in today's Bible passage, it says Jesus knew what he was going to do about the crowd's need for food before he even did anything. I'm not quite sure how John, the narrator of the story, knew that. We're not told that bit. But the key thing is that Jesus cared. And not only that, he knew that this was a moment in which he was going to do something of special significance. But despite being one step ahead and having everything already sorted out in in his mind, Jesus still asks the disciples to think about the problem for themselves. That's what teachers do, don't they? Uh, Particularly of older students and adults. They don't just spoon feed information. They encourage students to think for themselves by asking questions and getting them involved in the problem. And this is what Jesus seems to be doing here. And then one of the disciples, Andrew, um, points out there's a contribution of food from a small boy, just five loaves and two fish. And I can just imagine the other disciples looking at Andrew like he's a bit mad or maybe having a little (laughs) snigger behind the hands because obviously this tiny amount of food is not going to go very far at all. Even Andrew himself probably knows it's a bit of a silly suggestion because he says, how far is this going to go among so many? But Jesus doesn't laugh or scoff. Instead, he accepts that paltry contribution and says thank you to God for it. Well, then, of course, we see God's immense, outstanding power as Jesus and his disciples then distribute that food to the whole crowd. Everyone ate what they needed and there were 12 baskets left over, probably more than the five loaves and the two fish they started with. That's an awful lot of fish sandwiches, isn't it? It really is an incredible miracle of magnification. Well, if that isn't impressive enough, there's another thing about this miracle that's a little bit extra special. It seems to be an echo of a strikingly similar miracle involving the provision of food that happened over a thousand years earlier, when Moses led his people out of an awful situation of captivity in Egypt out across the desert towards a better life of freedom. The journey would have been long, hot and severely lacking in natural food sources along the way. So not surprisingly, that crowd complained a lot to Moses about the desert route and what they were now having to endure. But Moses had word from God that he would provide for them. And sure enough, for several days, There was like um, a frosting, if you like, of bread each morning on the ground, which the people gathered up and ate as they needed. And they called this miracle bread manna. And they also enjoyed quail, apparently, which came in and covered the camp in the evening. The similarities between this miracle and Jesus' miracle would surely not have gone unnoticed by the crowd following Jesus that day. It was a big fat sign that Jesus was a very special prophet indeed, and maybe even something more than that. So the feeding of the 5,000 has a lot to teach us at Harvest when we say thank you for what we have and try to help others who do not have. It tells us that God cares about the basic things that we need. He knows what those needs are and he knows what he's going to do about those needs. But despite this foreknowledge, God encourages our involvement in the problem. God is not an eternal Father Christmas or a fairy godfather with a magic wand who just fixes everything willy-nilly. Sometimes we wish that he would do that, but like all good teachers, He knows there's benefit from involving us in the solution. 
So we're in a partnership with God. We're asked to think about the needs of other people and to trust in God for the help. And like the disciple Andrew and that little boy with the five loaves and the two fish, we're not to worry if our contribution is a bit pathetic. Whatever we have to give can be taken by God and magnified. He might only require small amounts of resources, but he asks for big amounts of trust. And if we can manage that, we're to expect great things. And the similarities with the Moses story of manna from heaven points to a God that cared and provided for them in ancient times. The passage today teaches us that God cared and provided in Jesus' time too. So we must trust that God cares today and always will, one way or another, provide for our needs. So let's take note and bear all this in mind because we're likely to see a multitude of needs, both ongoing and new, now at Harvest 2020 and in the coming months and years ahead of us. Let us play our part in addressing those needs and trusting that God can work wonders. I'd like to finish by quoting another Bible passage that I discovered quite last minute um, in the prep for this talk, actually, um, but which seems to sum up everything that I'd been learning about in the story of um, the feeding of the 5,000. And it's taken from Ephesians 3, verse 20. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, for ever and ever. Amen. Hello everybody, I hope you're okay. I bought my lunch bag. Do you guys ever get hungry? I know I do, particularly if it's breakfast or lunch or dinner. In fact, come to think of it, any time's a good time for a bit of a snack, isn't it? And so I bought my lunch with me today. Maybe I could share it with you. Let me just tot up how many of you are here today. Let's have a look, see if I'm going to have enough to share. There's a lot of you. I'm not sure I've got enough. Let me have a look. Um, mm, I've got two cheeses. They're not going to go very far, are they? Oh, and I've got some cracker bread. Well, actually, maybe... I could crush this up of stone. There we go. That's into lots of pieces. I could share that with you all. Is that going to fill you up? Well, no. Probably not, is it? You know, food is a remarkable thing. When we eat food, our body breaks down what we put into it and turns up all those little munched up bits into things that we can use for strength and energy. And we don't really even have to think about it, do we? We eat something, hopefully healthy, and our body does the rest of the work. In some ways, our relationship with God is similar. We give to him whatever we might have and he can put it to work to do amazing things. And that's what happened in today's story. And that was to do with food. Jesus was teaching. And there was a big group of people that came to listen to what he had to say. Well, it happened to be getting late. It happened to be near dinner time. And the disciples brought to Jesus' attention that the crowds might be getting hungry. Jesus told his disciples to find something for the people to eat. 
that seemed a bit astonishing. There were more than 5,000 people present. And to give everyone even a tiny bit of food would cost more money than any of them had. All the disciples could find was one boy who happened to have bought his lunch with him. And all that consisted of was five loaves of bread and two fish. But the disciples took the boy to Jesus and he handed over his lunch. Jesus prayed over it and he had his disciples start passing the food around. Somehow that one little lunch didn't run out. In fact, it fed everyone in the crowd, even with some left over. How did Jesus do such a spectacular miracle? Well, we know Jesus could have done anything. So for us, it shouldn't be too much of a surprise. He didn't have to use that little lunch. He was God. He could have produced food out of a couple of rocks. Yet he took something that someone had and out of love for his people, he used it to feed them all. All the boy had to do was, was to be willing to be used. And we can allow God to use our lives too. We trust him to provide for us and we trust him to use whatever we give him. We might not think we've got much talent or ability or potential, but God sure does. He will take care of our needs and he will use us in ways we can't even imagine. We bring ourselves and he makes a new and wonderful creation out of our lives. What a miracle. Shall we say a prayer of thanks to God and ask him to use us too? Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for using whatever we have for your will. Please help us to trust in you and let our lives be used for your glory. We know you will always provide and make great things out of small things. Thank you for miracles. Thank you for your love. We love you, God. In Jesus' name, Amen. Well, thanks for joining me today, guys. It's lovely to see you as always, and I'll see you really soon. Bye. Let us pray. It's a strange harvest festival. For me, harvest is one time for reflection. Harvesting in my garden causes me to consider why the beetroot was so plentiful, but the runner beans not so good. And how come the seeds of red cabbage are still green? It always surprises me how a good year for one crop is often followed by bad but then something else takes its place and the outcome tends to be one of plenty for the freezer. And we still have some plums from last year. Reflection broadens to life and how fortunate we are. Temperate climate, few regular natural disasters and in general the ability to cope anyway. The many freedoms we take for granted speech and religion to name but two. The welfare state and the National Health Service, institutions often criticise, but wonderful nonetheless. Law and order, democracy, right here in our local community. So now consider other communities where they are not so fortunate. Picture them in your own mind. 
where democracy is a distant hope, where hunger is normal, where the health service is provided by aid agencies, and where the next natural disaster is just a matter of time. Pray for these places. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Pray for those in our community who are ill. Bring them strength. Pray especially for Alex Locke, a local young man from Otbrook who has recently been severely injured in a road traffic accident. He remains very poorly. Please pray for Richard and Jane and all the family. Pray for those recently bereaved. Bring them hope. Pray for each other. May we offer support to our neighbours, compassion to our colleagues, and bring a harvest of goodness wherever we are. Merciful Father, I accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, in a few moments, this service will end with a prayer of blessing. But firstly, I want to thank everybody who has put this service together for all their time and effort. It's very much appreciated. And also to share a few notices. These services of, of Church Without Walls will continue to be streamed every Sunday at 10 o'clock. But if you've got any thoughts how we can improve these services or new ideas, please let us know. Our postponed Churches AGM will be held in Ockbrook Church on October 25th at 11 o'clock with strict Covid protocols applied. If you need information, please contact us about that. The web address for the church 
will be on the screen at the end, and this will contain a place where you can access this month's new October news sheet, which shows what actual services and meetings are occurring in church buildings. If you would like to request prayer for yourself or a loved one, or somebody you know, our prayer email address will be on shown on the screen at the end of this service. Please continue to support and pray for our food bank as well, which again the relevant information will be shown at the end of this service. If you're interested in finding out more about the work of the Canaan Trust, there'll be much more information on this month's news sheet, as well as on the screen at the end. If you would like to contribute to their work via ourselves, please drop an envelope with cash or cheque made payable to Oakbrook with Borrowers PCC and marked for the Canaan Trust, either through the vicarage door or left in one of the church buildings during one of our services. So until we meet again, please keep safe and secure. And I pray that you and your loved ones are well. If you need any help at all, please do not hesitate to contact us. And now a prayer of blessing. May God our Creator, who clothes the lilies and feeds the birds of the air, bestow on us his care and increase the harvest of our righteousness. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>